welcome to my channel. My name is Laura Zorza and I'm a retired Navy veteran. If you are interested in information, education, and motivation for joining the Navy or serving in the Navy, then you're in the right spot. Today, I will be talking about the Navy Reserves. What is the Navy Reserves? How is it different than active duty? Simply put, it is part-time. Part-time as in you only go two days per month. That is all that is required of you. And you do two weeks per year. Anywhere from 12 to 17 days is the norm. Now, that is the minimal requirement. You need to earn at least 50 points. And you get points, for instance, from going to your drill weekend. Your drill weekend, for every weekend you go, that's four points. You get one point for the morning, one point for the afternoon on Saturday, one point in the morning, one point in the afternoon for Sunday. Total of four points. Times 12 months, that's 48 points. So you only need 50 to have what they call a good year, a satisfactory year. Right there, that's 48, okay? You throw in your two week AT, you get 15 points, which I always called your, like your good boy, good girl points for doing what you had to do. The Navy gives you a free 15 points. So with all that, you're gonna have a satisfactory year. But the idea is if you do the minimal, those 50 points, 60, you know, anywhere around that that number you are going to have a terrible retirement okay so you're going to want to shoot for higher points you can do that by doing additional drills um, some commands have funding for that especially the aviation field okay things like going on mobilization you know a deployment you can do adsw active duty for special work i did that for Quite a few years some and I did my ADSW locally so it's not like you know I was away from from the area um, you can also do ADT okay active duty training then there's also funerals okay funerals is considered um, active duty and, and the reason I throw that out there just with active duty is for instance I was rear-ended going to one of my funerals okay and I actually got injured, uh, my car got totaled, and the Navy actually paid for my medical bills because it was considered active duty, not a reserve, reserve time. But there are many ways that you can earn extra points and extra money in the reserves, okay? I actually made a living off of doing really nothing but the reserves for quite a period of time. So it is possible. Now, it's not going to be like right when you come out of your boot camp in A school when you're a junior sailor. It'll be more when you're maybe like a third class, a second class, you know, E4, E5. And as you get higher up, as you gain the experience and, and such. Okay. So, you go to your drill weekend. For the most part, most reservists go to a NOS, Navy Operational Support Center, located like... In a neighborhood you know it's nothing special uh, this building you'll report to the NOSC between depending on your reserve center between 7 and 7 30 in the morning on Saturday and on Sunday and you will stay until between 4 and 4 30 so 1600 16 30 you will have an hour for lunch the NOSC will bring food in and they'll cater it it's all free it's paid for you know, you'll sign up. Um, some of the catering is, is phenomenal. Some of it is like worse than food that I had in the Navy. Um, but it all depends. So every NOSC is a little different, okay? Also depending on your rate, depending on your command. You may very well, especially like the CBs, if you're out in the field, you're gonna be eating MREs, okay? So that's how that basically works. For the most part, you go for two days, sit in a classroom um, if your leadership does not keep you busy keep you engaged uh, unfortunately there's a lot of leadership like that in the reserves you'll see a lot of reservists playing video games on their phone or watching YouTube so it's uh, 
it, it all depends. Now you do have the commands, um, which are now like for instance, Coastal Riverine. I, when I was attached to the unit, it was actually inshore boat unit, IBU. Okay, you will actually be on the water with the, the small craft. You, for instance, uh, Navy cargo handling, I was attached to them. We actually went to Alameda, California. Um, even though I was in Florida, I was cross assigned to the West Coast, unloading, offloading containers, you know. So there's, there's a lot of commands where you actually have a lot of hands-on experience. This is down here in South Florida, especially being, um, you know, in the Navy reserves, you're not gonna do really jack unless you have a command that really gets you out and about um, doing stuff. Okay, and so how it works is, so you go to drill weekend, you muster in the morning, <coughs> and then after you muster in the morning, you will do whatever medical, um, they'll, they'll come out at muster with like a hit list, and you will do uh, like, hey, so-and-so's on the hit list for medical, you need to go get your shots. So you'll go and get your shots. Um, you know, you'd be working on evaluations. Uh, you know, there, there's a variety of things that you can be doing. Um, I would highly recommend you get some collateral duties, um, especially as you go up with your pay grade, okay? But, <clears throat> For the most part, that's what you do. And then your two weeks a year, which you choose, unless you're cross assigned to a command and that command may, for instance, like the CBs, they'll have certain exercises every year. So you know, like always in June at this time frame, you're gonna be doing your two weeks, you know, going to Meridian, Mississippi or out to California or, or, or whatnot. Okay, <clears throat> but other than that, especially if you're not cross-assigned in the beginning, you will be choosing your own AT, okay? Now, some ATs, your annual training, your two weeks, is better for some rates than others. For instance, LS, okay, logistics specialists, the uh, supply people. I have some sailors uh, that I served with that have been basically living off the reserves because for instance i have one right now i just found out yesterday she's out in hungary okay she has done japan south korea multiple times italy spain i mean it's crazy at some of the places she goes okay ls and yn i would say are the two rates especially in the reserves that are going to get you to the most locations um, because everyone needs a yn doing the paperwork and an ls for supply so if you're really looking at travel, that's something that really interests you, I would highly recommend going LS. Um, they actually advance a lot better than many rates in the reserves. My opinion is not doing what you do on the civilian side. For instance, I had a lot of sailors that were MAs that were also police officers on the outside. And I only say that because yes, you're, you're familiar with it, so it's easy just coming right into that position. But the fact is, the way I look at it is, why not do something different, you know? If, you, if you've always wanted to, you know, learn construction, uh, become a CB. Um, if you want to, you know, learn all about weapons, about guns, uh, you know, become a gunner's mate, which is what I was. Depending on what you want, um, I would highly recommend looking into the rates. What rates are you um, considering? You know, if, if you're not sure, if you're, you know, kind of break it down. Do you want to be more of an outside person? Do you want to be more of an indoor office person? Then do you want to work in the aviation community? Or do you want to be shipboard side um, rate? So there are many factors like that to look at. Um, and then from there, you can look at the ASVAP scores, which is the score that you need to be able to um, choose that rate. And it still doesn't guarantee it because when you go to MEPS, it'll it'd be determined by what rates are available at that time. But at least to give you um, more direction on where you may go, okay? A lot of reservists do mobilize um, by volunteering. Your orders will state involuntary to protect you with your jobs back home for any type of credit cards, for um, you know breaking your lease, stuff like that. 
but basically, you know, yeah, you just go for your two days, work on whatever you're going to work on. I highly recommend that if you are going to be sitting in a classroom that you actually study. And um, if you live out of the area, more than 50 miles, it has to be more than 50 miles. So if you're 49, 49 and a half, you're SOL. Okay, 50 miles or more away from the NOSC, you will get um, a hotel unless you choose to drive home every day, but you have the opportunity to stay in a hotel that the Navy pays for. Okay, you have to sign up ahead of time, but they'll pay for your Friday night and your Saturday night hotel. Whatever questions you have, like I said, comment down below. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I am a new channel and I'm trying to grow it. Uh, let me know what questions you have be between active duty and the reserves. I served on both. I retired on the reserve side. Uh, but whatever questions you may have, please like say comment down below, send me a, a message, and I'll make a video about it. So until the next video, take care, be safe, and have a great day. Bye.